Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We're starting a cool new series here. We're going to start a whole series on biotopes, the biotope I'm so aquarium. I'm excited about this. Um, biotopes are something that I love. The idea about it is so fun. I absolutely don't have the discipline to set one up myself because I always get distracted by whatever cool plant I want to put in there but I'm glad we have somebody who does have that we dedication. Do. So first we should define what a biotope is. Yeah. So a biotope is a aquarium, oh, I guess it could apply to any sort of sure. artificial environment that you're trying to replicate a naturally occurring ecosystem in the type of flora and fauna that you're putting in it. Right, so it could be as general as I'm doing a South American biotope. Mm -hmm or as specific as I'm doing a specific reef in Lake Malawi. Our resident biotope expert, Robbie, is uh, taking over this project. So let's go take a look and see what he's got going on. <laughs> Welcome to the biotope area. This is where the magic is gonna happen. So we've got a total of four tanks going on. And this is Robbie, he is our biotope expert. What's the first tank, Robbie? Uh, the first tank I'm gonna be doing is a biotope of the Rio Negro. Um, the Rio Negro is over a thousand miles long, and so I'm not going to be doing a basic biotope. I'm going to focus in on the middle region, specifically a stream. Very cool. So some fast moving water? Uh, no, it's going to be slow moving water. Is it water. slow there? Yes. Okay. Yep. What's the chemistry of the water like? It's very acidic because of all of the tannins and um, organic matter that is decaying in the water. So a little black water. Going it's on. going to be black water. So Charles is making. I was like, so Rio Negro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what fish should we put in this thing? Um, I haven't completely decided yet. There are hundreds of species um, in the area. I think I have narrowed it down to a pair of checkered bird cichlids. Very cool. Um, plain back, um, bleeding hearts. Rummy nose tetras, um, either green neons, which are more common in the area because the water is very shallow, right. or cardinal tetras. And we also got in a group of uh, marble hatchet fish, and I'm oh, tempted to put those in as well. That could be really perfect <laughs> at the surface. Those yeah. are some very yeah. cool fish. It's hard yeah. to complain about any of those because those are all just. I yeah. love every single one of those fish. It's amazing that we have so many cool fish that come from that same tiny stretch of water. And what's fun for me is I've never kept any of these fish before, so. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Let's Perfect. See. What about plant life? Um, there's very few plants in this area. Okay. Mostly, mostly because of little sunlight being a right. stream. The canopy is very heavy. Um, also because of the acidic water. However, to um, according to Crystal Kesselman's book. Mm -hmm. She said that tonini is very common in the area, mm. and so I will be doing one of those. Cool. Filtering? We are going to be using a fluvial candlestick canister filter on it. Perfect. Um, obviously a heater. For sand, I am using um, Carib C. Um, according to an article that I read in um, Amazona Magazine, um, the sunset gold is exactly the same color as found um, in the Rio Negro region. So that's what I'm using is for sand. That is a very cool, that sand texture, that's going to look very cool. It there. looks so natural already. Yep. And I see a Kessel light sitting there. Yes, yeah, so I'm using a Kessel light to um, recreate that spotlight effect of a single shaft of sunlight making its way through the canopy. Wow. And that's exactly why Kessel lights are my personal favorite light. Kessels are beautiful. Great. Yes. Kessels are great for that spotlight effect. Yes, I love using a spotlight effect. I've never used a Kessel before, so this will also be a new experience for me. Awesome. <laughs> and are you keeping those botanicals in there? Is that for the tank? This is, is for the tank. Yes, I put these off of a co-worker's home palm tree. Wow. <laughs> so yes, I will be using these. I would like to actually get some more. Um, in the um, natural environment in this area, the entire ground is covered and a thick bed of leaves, wow. so I will be doing that as well, and mixing in um, uh, driftwood, roots, branches, things like that. Um, the overall effect is going to be very jumbled, random, and messy. In fact, there will be a lot of detritus, in fact, floating around in it, so not your typical pristine Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Sounds really cool. I can't wait to see I'm it. I'm so excited I'm for this excited. project. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a long time coming, but I'm really excited to see this project go. 
Keep checking back in. We'll give you updates as Robbie progresses on this aquascape and we'll let you see it all when it's finished. And hopefully by that time, we can have more people in the store when it's finished and, and tour the aquascape here. So have you started thinking about what your next biotope is going to be? Yeah, after I do this 40 long, I'm going to do this 55 and it was going to be someplace in Lake Malawi. I like wow. it. That's a good teaser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I know we're going to have lots of fun. Keep those hands wet.